Hi guys, it's Ray. I'm back to fill this elephant mold that I freeformed yesterday. Um, I mixed 14 ounces of resin. This is mixed. I just dripped a little in there. And I'm going to use a whole bunch of purples. I'm just going to throw everything at it and try and figure out as I go what I want it to look like because I really have no idea. So I'm going to start by putting resin in a bunch of cups, breaking this big batch down. I'm going to fill them each fairly full because I have a ton. So if I have extra, I will make other molds. I don't waste the resin dripping on my glitters. I'm not really worried about dripping a little bit in there right now. It'll cover and blend in. And I'm going to figure with my luck somebody's going to come home while I'm working. Or need my help with something. Because that's typically what happens when I mix a big batch. So oh, I think I did my cup count right when I pulled my medicine cups. We'll see in a minute. I'm going to use a mix of micas, alcohol inks, and a couple of glitters. Just a couple of glitters. Okay. And I did mix this kind of quick. There are some bubbles in it. I'm not too, too worried about that. But I don't want a ton of bubbles. So hopefully as I mix the pigments and such in, the bubbles will smooth out. I'm just wiping off the edge of this cup and I'm going to set it over here on this wipe out of the way. Actually, I'm going to put it on this side out of the way. Because I'm going to put my little cups that way as I mix. So I'm going to grab a bunch of popsicle sticks and get started. This is just an extra fine orchid. I don't even know where this glitter came from. But I'm going to use it. I'm kind of thinking maybe a swirl of some sort but I don't really know how that's going to work with such an irregular shape. So, this will fall into one of those, me and my big ideas. Alright, that's enough of that. Just going to get the glitters done and out of the way. This is just a light lavender. If I can get the top off. It's just an ultra fine lavender. I'm not going to use any chunkies in this. I'm just going to stick to the two, kind of both ends of the purple spectrum. One a little bit darker and one pretty light. Um, it's going to be hard to see the colors as I pour this over the blue silicone. So. I won't really be able to see what I get until it's off and demolded. I'm going to go ahead and do the alcohol inks. This is um, one of the new ones from Tim Holtz line this year called Vineyard. And I am hoping that it maintains its purple. Um, I know the boysenberry that I'm going to use next from the new line maintains its color better than some of the other Tim Holtz colors. And I do think, estimating, that I probably have twice as much epoxy ready as I probably need, but um, I'm going to switch gloves in a minute here, but I'd rather have too much 
and fill some molds, then not enough and be scrambling halfway through the project to mix more. This mold that I made is fairly shallow. So I'm thinking that it's gonna be somewhere between 200 and 300 milliliters, but I didn't wanna try and measure it like I normally would. I'm gonna use two of my homemade inks. Um, as long as I don't mix the whites in them, they seem to work okay. So, they don't seem to like the blooming technique. I did test that out on a coaster. But I think they'll end up more translucent. And once I pour this, I am going to hit it with the heat gun to try and remove the rest of the bubbles that haven't worked themselves out in the meantime. So, but hopefully some of them do start to work out on their own. And this is just another one of the ones I made. A little bit darker. Hopefully it's different enough from the Tim Holtz ones though to be a separate color. If I find when this is done that it's too transparent, I cannot remember what the wall color uh, is of this little girl's room. Um, but if I find, I'm going to switch this glove just because I don't want to get ink all over the bags. If I find that it's going to be too translucent for her room, I may spray paint the back white just to hold the colors. So these are just five of the um, micas from a big pack from Amazon. You don't need a lot with mica. Basically just the end of your popsicle stick will do, typically for a medicine cup like this anyways. So, and get those mixed quick. Again, I have no idea. I may break the dams on the edges of this when I start to pour. Again, I didn't test it with water or anything, so we'll find out. This is definitely a um, new thing for me. But if it works, I'm going to be super excited because it'll open up a world of possibilities for me. So, we shall see. I still feel like the silicone smells though. Even though it's fully dried at this point. And the only white I'm going to add at all is this magical violet. Typically the magical colors are to be used over a darker base. And then they have a little sheen of the color. I'm going to go ahead and use it in this one. Um, just to break up the color a tiny bit. And um, like I said, I don't know yeah what the background color will be so if it ends up staying on a darker wall or something it'll be kind of neat so hopefully this doesn't turn out completely ugly hopefully it demolds fine I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to demold it before like Monday but it's the holiday weekend and we don't have tremendous plans everybody will be off and things will get busy so and I don't want to do like a super rush job on demolding it and 
these cups that I've had sitting that I can still see, they're actually pretty clear already. The bubbles have mostly worked themselves out. It's extremely hot in here right now, which is also going to affect my working time. But it's also helping in bubble removal. I just spilled half of that over the edge, but that's all right. I probably have plenty in there anyways. This one was pretty full to begin with. So, one more to mix. Okay. Not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous about this whole thing. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe some of this out. I'm gonna get some of this glitter I dripped in there. I may even scoop some of that out. Okay. Ooh, I don't know where to start. So these are all the micas. These two look awfully similar. which is fine. And all the inks. I think that one's maybe in frame. Try not to get epoxy all over the wood that this was sitting on, but get the extra stick back out of here. And the two glitters. So I think I'm going to just jump in. I don't think I want an ink for the very outer edge. So I'm going to go ahead and start with one of the micas. And I'm going to chase it with an ink. And I'm going to have to work fairly quickly, so if I go completely quiet or I ramble excessively, and I may bring, oh, can't actually see where I'm pouring. Whoops. Got a little out of hand on that one. Bring in another ink. And yes, these are already starting to warm up a little bit. See, I don't listen to myself. I say I'm not going to do an ink on the edge, and what do I do? Grab another ink and run it on the edge. Typical me. So I'm going to go ahead and just chase right back on that edge with this mica. And see if it'll push it. Now, you have to remember that this is different than a typical mold. What I am looking at on the top will in fact be the top when I'm finished. So what you see on the surface is what you will get on the surface. I do want to break up that tail where I over poured so I'm going to leave the glitter layers for last. I did level my surface extremely well before I started. That is important. I 
and I will not even attempt to move this project. This is a very light color. That was almost like using a clear. So I'm just going to finish that one and be done with that. That was one of the homemade inks, I believe. I mean, it may not be as light as it looks when it's not on the um, blue. I'm just going to go ahead and keep filling, swirling from the center out and maybe ending in different appendages. a little like a baby swirl I was kind of thinking at first of attempting this kind of geode style but I wasn't really sure because of who it's for if I should go that route or not so and I'm trying to keep an eye on the levels because I don't want to overflow any one spot before I've used everything I need to use. And this is going to be my lowest side. So when this and this gets to the top, that's it. That's all I'll be able to do. So I'm just going to take this interference violet or invisible violet, whichever they call it in this particular brand, and do a little drizzle. And I'm going to hit this with a little bit of heat just to see if it'll move and flow. It's going to be too full to tilt at all, so I will not be able to mix that way. I may go in with a uh, fine stick and swirl it around a little bit. And I really could have mixed a tiny cup of the white, to be honest. because you never use as much white. So the glitter, where do I want to put the glitter? I think I'll just run a outline to start. Because I don't really want a super ton of glitter, but I do want a little bit of sparkle. And this is that lighter one, so I'm just going to go ahead and basically the same. And maybe just a quick drizzle in the center. Okay, I'm going to squat down to eye level and see where I'm at because I feel like I'm just about there on this edge. Um, I think I can go a little bit further, but not too much. So I'm just going to stay down here and keep an eye on things. Because I don't really want to get silicone out and try to... Um, Dam it up wet. That doesn't necessarily work. So, but I'm actually feeling pretty good about where I'm at. It's pretty sparkly and shiny. I don't like the lines of the white, and that's what the heat is going to take out. The problem with the heat gun is going to be. I don't want to get right up on it and move, move. 
because I don't want it to blow out. So I'm going to have to be super careful about that. And honestly, I may turn around and pour another one of these with purples next week because I may hate this entirely. But I'm going to take the spare gloves off because they're now pretty icky. I feel like the tail's pretty good. I feel like the trunk is pretty good. I can see where I'm going to have to clean a little bit here with my rotary tool when I'm done. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit it with... I'm going to clean up some of these cups first. Get them out of the way. And I do have quite a bit of mixed epoxy left over here. So I will probably pour a quick coaster when I'm done. I may use those in it. I'm going to go ahead and probably weigh the cup again just to see roughly how much I over poured. So if I reuse this mold, I'll know. That's part of why I did it by weight. So I'm going to do that quick while I'm thinking about it and before I move the rest. So I started with 14 ounces and I have about four and a half left plus this 20 mils and that's maybe 15 between those two cups. And so I probably have about five ounces left. So this took about nine ounces to fill it to this point. So now I know. Again, I'm just gonna torch quick. I don't want to mess up that silicone. And then I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the heat gun. And hopefully some of those white lines will break up and spread out. This resin was getting pretty warm though, so I'm not sure. Again, I don't want to overflow the banks, so I'm going to try and push in and up. And once again, it is tough to see color on the blue silicone, but it's what I had that was clean enough. So, I'm just going to make do. Okay, so I think I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, this was kind of the experiment piece to see if the mold would hold. If it comes out beautiful, great. If not, I'm not terribly concerned. Um, because I'll be able to do another one. So... My heat gun got very warm over here. Oh, actually, huh, this is fun. I have a little smoky mist rising. I thought it was my heat gun. It's not. If you hear us warn you, 
I'm not going to be able to use this clearly. Um, it was fluid a minute ago. When you hear us say in these videos, do not throw a cup like this in the trash if you don't finish your resin, this is why. Hopefully you can actually see that on camera. But that is in fact smoking. I set my heat gun down next to the cup and thought it was my heat gun. But this will be completely hard now in a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna let it sit there and finish. Like I said, I was trying to move quick enough to be able to use that, but clearly that is no longer an option. I really hate to waste that much resin, but um, it's completely useless now. I'm just gonna work a couple swirls in. see how that looks because like I said this top side that we're looking at is going to be the finished piece it's not going to probably be like a coaster where I take it out and flip it over because it's not going to be the shiny on this I would have to um, shine it up myself And this resin is smoking like crazy. So, if it's not completely finished flash setting, that will be going outdoors with me and sitting up on a piece of concrete somewhere. difficult to get any visible swirls in the tail but all right so I'm gonna stop messing with this and I'm just going to let it sit and finish curing uh, if I can get back to it tonight I will get back to it tonight I will come back on and demold it if it's hard enough it's tough to say sometimes with molds I mean I poured four coasters last night and did three animal molds with alcohol inks. The coasters are fully cured and the molds are still flexible. So, and it's not an, it's not a um, resin mix fail in this case. It's just that it's a thin piece with alcohol inks and sometimes they just take a little bit longer. They will hard cure. It's just, they may take the full 72 hours. But this is extremely hot. I wish I had a thermal thermometer, like a gun, to tell you how hot this is. But it's actually too hot to handle. So be aware of that. Be aware of what your resin is doing next to you. Do not throw that in the trash with any paper. And that's about it. So thanks for watching. I am going to consider this a success at this point because it looks like I have the overall shape I was actually going for. I may have to clean up some of the edges with the um, rotary tool and um, I didn't break any dams anywhere. There is nothing flowing out of here. There's a few drips where I spilled but nothing is actually flowing out. So it actually adhered to the silicone perfectly. And I am pretty pleased. So like I said, we'll see how it looks when it comes out. I'll be back. I'm back. I think it's ready to come out. It's still soft, but I think it'll be okay. So I'm gonna put a piece of parchment down to put it on and I think I'm going to flip it over and try and pop it out that way beautiful I 
There we go. Good, reusable. Um, it's going to need some cleanup, but we knew that was going to happen. grabbing gloves. I don't want to handle it too much without gloves because I don't want to leave prints in it because it is, like I said, relatively soft still. And I just want to kind of feel the edges. So that's going to be the back side. And this will be the front. I'm putting it on the sheet of parchment. I get a better idea of what it's going to look like on um, a white surface. But when it's completely dry, I will come in with my rotary tool and just sand around the edges quick. Like I said, it's pretty flexible right now. It is semi-transparent, but not terrible. So. I think it's pretty cute. Um, I didn't have to pull it as soon as I did, but I wanted to get it out before the weekend got busy and I didn't get to get back to it till Monday because the anticipation was killing me and I really wanted to see it, so. Now I've seen it, I know it's good and I can relax. I am going to grab, if I know where they are, um, a couple of eye hooks quick. I got them right here. And I'm going to go ahead and put two of those in while it's soft. Probably one in the head and one in the back, and I'll just go ahead and like dremel around them. But that way it'll be able to hang. I'll just put a piece of ribbon on it. It's an awkward angle for me to get them started up. Just spin it around. poke a little hole to get it started. There. It's hard for me to hold on to with the gloves and it's an awkward angle. Get them in in a minute um, once I'm off here so I can actually get right into it you don't need to see that part but like I said I'm just gonna put one in here and one in here and string a skinny ribbon through it and a purple and that'll make it so it has a little loop to hang on a wall and be semi adjustable so that is it. I'm going to consider my first freeform mold a success. And um, you'll probably be seeing more of these in the very near future. Thank you for watching. Please give me a like and subscribe. Bye.